Welcome to Reader Syndicate 3.0, the next evolution of the look into counterculture that is canon. My name is Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds, and this started as a one-man mission for strain history and breeding science. Over time, it's evolved into something bigger, better, and more of a team effort. We will be joined by members of the Canaluminati and other friends throughout the seasons to hear their takes on grow techniques, breeding science, strain history, and more. Our mission is to combat the narrative that corporate cannabis and seed posers are obfuscating for their own financial benefit. Welcome to the underground. We are the Syndicate. Welcome to Breeder Syndicate. I'm Matthew, here with my co-host Thousandfold. Today we have a really, really special show, special to me, special lot to all the, the forum members of the community from back in the day. Um, we have everyone from the Canna Cabana that made that place special, that built it up. And each one of these guys really brought something special to cannabis other than just the cabana so each has their own unique stories how they came to it and i'm so stoked i'm honored thank you for doing this with us it means a shitload to me as someone who grew up looking up to you guys and with that thousand take it away bro yeah you know i feel very very much like a guest here i'm very remote from all of you and and, and especially remote from that time in cannabis so yeah i'm also just very grateful to be here um, I thought we could kick it off with a little icebreaker. Maybe we do a round table. Each one of you tell us, uh, how did you get into forums, uh, into the forums to begin with, uh, as part of your growing or, or uh, you know, journey? Um, maybe we can start with D-Man. Sure. Uh, look, I'm D-Man. I think everybody oh. knows me as it's a, it's a, it's a, knows the forums. Uh, I think I hit the forums, you know, like 1997 when uh, Overgrow was still, I think it was called The Edge back then or something like that. And uh, what a wild ride that was when you first get on the internet. And uh, it was the coolest place ever, dude. Like all these other people grow. That's when I just really started getting, growing weed indoors at that time, 97, 98. And finding that, dude, people were sharing genetics all over the place. So it's like, wow, this is cool. So that's where I kind of got started, hanging out there. And pretty rowdy place at the time. But uh, it, it was definitely cool. Uh, other like-minded people around and uh, didn't know that existed, you know, especially on the Internet, you know, which was all really new. That At least to me, I knew I'd be around for a while. Same here for sure um why well, didn't mean to interrupt go ahead darren please. no no i'm done dude i discovered it basically after i guess my dad gave me a uh hand-me-down computer around 1994 or so and didn't really discover the online cannabis community till closer to uh 19 oh help me out here darren when did we uh, when were we and and late, howie late late 90s dude it was it, late, was, it was late 90s yeah yeah it was really pre 9 11 for sure like a few years before 9 -11. okay so i i taught myself to grow all up before that without the internet i had to go source uh underground books from shady little bookstores uh, here and there, and finally piece together how hydroponics might actually work. Of course, I didn't have enough sense to go to the library, I guess. But um, And then discovering the forums, that was like, oh, this was everything I needed. I just I can't believe I didn't have this trellis netting on my plants to hold them up. And here's a picture of what I need to do. And it's like, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, these forums are going to be fun. <laughs> and they were. Still are. But they All were. Right, now, sir. Yeah. What do you got? Well, uh, <coughs> late 80s, I uh, moved to Colorado and uh, could not find good pot here uh, on my own. So thanks to my uh, great wife, I was able to start growing on my own. Uh, found the internet by looking for seeds um yes wasn't uh too long you know after the late 90s i started really looking for seeds i came across uh 
overgrow in the cannabis world. And uh, and actually came across D-Man then and uh, became like his primary beta tester. Um, and at the same time, I was beta testing for Mota Rebel. Uh, had a great time because the genetics were coming to me from them and a few other folks up in Canada on the west side from uh, where D-Man is were sending me genetics as well. So um, I kind of became a weirdly, I'm a very small scale grower as most people who get to know me know, Um, but I ended up at one point holding genetics and supplying clones to, God, I don't know how many people, Steve, right? Between you and me, we oh, sell God, we, stuff everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> every, everywhere in the you. world possible, we tried to get stuff there. Yeah, once and, we learned and, how to. And we had the hardest trouble, I think, with Darren. Through D. Well, Darren's I, a I, troublemaker. It, it comes yeah, naturally. I, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, packages made it to Hungary with clones, no problem, but couldn't get them past. <laughs> Canada's hard, Canada bro. Security. It's, Canada's it's still hardcore. Hard. Still, still, it's hard to get so. clones over that border. Dude, I don't know how, but Cushy Man, that guy can get clones over the border. I don't know how he does it. He's <laughs> got a fucking secret, but he does it. But I'll tell you, just to, just to jump in here, of all the elite clones that you guys have heard about in the U.S., mm-hmm. they they went through these two guys' hands before they went to anybody. That's amazing. Like, uh, yeah, Steve and 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 Howie, dude, everything went through them, everything, uh, and that's that's kind of weird because, you know, we're, we're older than everybody else. It's like, well, <laughs> we we had to start out with seed because we definitely didn't have clone connections, right. and then when we finally discovered the online community, it just opened up everything, and then you're just oh. the kid in the candy store, right? Um, okay. I think I bought my first seeds from Mark Emery way back in the day. Wow. wow. And and he sent me strains I didn't order, but that's a different <laughs> story. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, and I, I started, remember the way I met you, Steve, we were, you know, we were talking about, you know, how nice it would be if we each had different different bud to smoke. And next thing we we knew, we were trading through the mail, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of samples to each other. And uh, you became my primary source for, ooh, I want to try to grow that. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Which is I think, I think a lot of to people this day. Really for Skitty Pretty Skitty much Lake. still to this day. Yeah. Got a bunch of new ones. Actually, that whole new batch I got in, most of those just flopped, unfortunately. Oh. Are you running cookie stuff now? I am running some some cookie strains. I've got the garlic cookies, which I really like. Got a mm-hmm. bunch of other new stuff. Got this modified grapes, which I haven't grown out, but Howie has. He says it's very nice. Feedback. Yeah. <laughs> and... Yeah, I've got Not that you can see this tiny little itsy bitsy bud. I can go get a bigger bud, but oh, that's what God, I'm smoking. Man. Smoking <laughs> this little modified grapes right now. Well, here if you want It's the size of a grape. It's actually actually the buds. This is some really, sour diesel. They're really nice <laughs> and dense. And the buds uh, the buds on the modified grapes are very reminiscent of the ice cream cake. Yeah. yeah. Um, they look a lot like the ice cream cake, but when you smell them, you can tell they're definitely two different different beasts. It's just they look almost exactly alike growing. I mean, could be twins. Aside uh-huh. from modern genetics, let's talk about what you guys were first seeing when you when you hit the scene. Like a lot, of course, a lot of strains didn't have names at the time, but when you started seeing that, like Darren, what do you what did you see? Dude, it was like <laughs> you know back then it was the sorry. See me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Back then, a dude, it was like, a, you know, the White Widows, a secret Coke recipe, White Widows, a lot of, you know, blueberry, not and not just DJ Shorts. Um, oh, it's real blueberry, though. 
yeah, like, uh, dude, the, seriously, the best blueberry, and not a knock to DJ or anything, but was that Sagra Mathis blueberry? Dude, yes. that, that shit rocked. That was some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then, dude, for, for me, it was like, I never really bought, you know, breeder seeds, like, at, really at all. I found Seabay through Cannabis World, dude, and that's where I spent my money. Yeah. Uh, dude, there was like, and, and some of those guys, you know, like, never heard of before like most of them you know just oh probably yeah apologize oh, over, his... but dude some of the best genetics ever came out of there for cheap dude. Like, like you mentioned motor rebel one oh, of them motor rebel right. like dude joey weed you know like that's where yep. i got my start um there was the, joey... the three three c or the three c's a classic clone company i actually forget who that was but dude the, and you know katsu's bluebird his collection like that dude mm. just like ruled <laughs> he just bought everything right yeah he did he spent a lot <laughs> and dude if i i sold my own seeds at seabay and that would be the only way i bought seeds was uh some serious seeds uh i would just instead of taking cash from rc i would just say like, send me seeds that he had on the board right and the sagramatha blueberry literally the only two breeder seeds i ever bought um everything else was seabay and traded straight up freebies dude that was what it was great back then like nobody really cared about money like even the seabay dude like nothing other than you know dutch flower stuff nothing went over for like 25 30 bucks a pack like mm -hmm, it yeah. was awesome awesome like that was what made the forums fun for me dude and like everybody wanted to talk like everybody was willing to share like we all had our little knowledge like you know i had all kinds of outdoor experience before i had the indoor experience so i like to hang out there and then it's it's like steve said it was like a kid in the cane store dude it was awesome and and people were awesome them. there there was trolls but for the most part the first oh, few there were years trolls. there <laughs> the first few years it was like this is cool dude like you had no idea and all over the world like australia new zealand like you know fiji like growers from all over the world it, it was awesome and then dude you could literally ship clones and seeds no problem back then no problem. yeah that was super easy but after 9 11 then everything just slammed shut right well back in the day you could get a priority mail package in two days like it was supposed to and the, and the clones <laughs> would still be alive what kind of stuff are you seeing skitty <laughs> excuse me what, what kind of stuff are you seeing when you first uh, got online oh boy um before i got any clones in the mail i did buy some seeds and had some good ones i had dj short um hello not not the blue bit can you hear me hello oh flow thank you yes <laughs> had the the flow and I'm like an idiot i didn't keep that one but this was way back in the day but yes i had the dj short flow i had a dj short blueberry and i also had a blueberry that someone else had given me which could have just been a mirror image of the dj shorts but it was just real wonderful blueberry um i bought those legendary packs of slider from sagramantha and grew those out that's where i found the cherry slider right and legendary that, <laughs> yes i will regain that one day um, smoked it never grew it but. and then what else did i oh my god bog strains if you remember bog oh yeah his, his boggle gum and sour bubble yeah i don't think i had necessarily think i had the sour bubble i may i very well may have this is a long time ago yeah that's so, true not real this is when i was down in new orleans at, at the time and did he have bog bubble at the time Blue he had something rocks? called remember boggle gum yeah yeah actually that was um, good bogs boggle gum dude that was yeah? good that was good yeah. oh and i i had the th seeds boggle gum or excuse me th seeds bubble gum as well yes. and i had th seeds chocolate chunk which i didn't really find any chocolate or any chunk about it it was just Same. one of those hit and miss sort of things didn't you uh, do the Choco Diesel too, though, Skitty? Yeah, it's true. Well, right. that was that was way down the road after, oh, yeah. um, after Santa Smoke had his trivia contest late one night at Cannabis World and gave out the packs of seeds. 
That's right. The chocolate you're, diesel. You're the original chocolate diesel guy. I made yeah, one the, much later, and, and people would, would ask me if I was the chocolate diesel guy from Gorilla Glue. I was like, ah, uh-uh, that came before me. <laughs> you know. Yeah, there there are two finos out there. There's another cannabis world alumni who's at the cabana now, uh, Knucklehead, and Knucklehead found a separate fino from what mine was. So there's a knucklehead Fino and then there is the skitty Fino. I'm pretty sure mine was a bit more distributed than than the uh, knucklehead. All right, Howie, uh, what did you you see during those uh, first years? What strains were you running into? Well, of course, I ran into D-Man, so I was beta testing a whole (laughs) lot of his stuff. Um, Same thing with Mota. So I saw a lot of those strains, but I ran into just different groups of people. We had lots of, lots of very kind people. So I had strains from Cabbage Man, 1969. Cabbage Man. Um, I had, you know, strains from Stash. Um, just all kinds of stuff. I was seeing a lot of um, Aloha White Widow crosses. Right. Did you we were seeing a lot of Black Widow G13 crosses, a Thanks, lot of Flips. G13 Gorilla Arm. Um, oh, I remember back, that. Yes. Yep. Back in the day when we originally started here, you know, in Colorado, I also was able to source some Romulan and some of the Colorado Peabud, um, oh, wow. which back in the day, you know, thinking about it, I really wish I knew how to clone and keep plants back then because there were some real cherry plants back in the day um we also saw a tremendous amount of durbin in colorado um in the late 80s early 90s um always a pleasure to grow um uh we even ended up getting our own cut somehow or other colorado has its own durbin cut um i think I'm not sure who that's care of. Maybe Stacy Muir. Oh, maybe um, might have been instrumental in that. Um, another real nice guy. And then I um, was privy to helping these other two gentlemen run an auction for a gentleman in Australia named Rob Wall um, back in the day to help him get out of some troubles. So I was kind of the middleman for. I don't know how many thousands of seeds that um, different members across the different forms donated to us so we could have an auction and send him some money. And uh, so even today in my seed collection, I still hold some things that they uh, everybody gave me extras so I would have for me. Um, I'm still holding seeds from back in the day from that auction. Um, wow got to find something to do with them yeah yeah i mean are, are they in a fridge yes oh yes good man good man <laughs> did it right bro so yes, was, you mentioned someone from australia was that later to be d-man's buddy or a different person from that region uh no, it's a diff- different guy okay. different guy when we first got on cannabis world um back in you know i i got back on OG in 90, I think it was 99, but I didn't move over to Cannabis World till 2000. That's where D and I started really connecting. Um, But back then, we had a grip of folks who were from all over the world growing. They were, a lot of them were there for, you know, having stairway for, for seeds to get, you know, from, you know, uh, sea bay yeah and um we a lot of us we all have things in common you know so you meet people different ways and um that we just had people from all over trading us stuff we had guys in england uh i remember the original uk cheese came to us is that by uh, vision from vision yeah yeah Uh, yeah. and uh you know when when we all first saw pictures of it, we saw pictures of this white plant sitting out in a, somebody's <laughs> backyard in England, and it was like, "Wow, what the heck is that?" Yeah. 
Yeah, is that covered in mold? And then we find and out. I, I remember that very photo. That was yeah, yeah. that was wild. It was. And we um, had to have it. <laughs> and 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 Vision made sure that a group of us got it skinny me, and and god rest his soul buckwheat you know yep. was in the early days buckwheat was heavily involved with us in in making sure a large number of members got a variety of clones uh that we were being sent from you know canada through uh vision creator and thunder monkey yeah, yeah. shout out vision so, he watches sometimes <laughs> and uh you know being in canada vision it was easy for vision to get me the uk cheese right so yeah right one goes to the next that was easy like uh and back then you know that was i pretty sure pre 9 11 ish or right around there when oh, yeah. it was still easy to get stuff across and like i said you know howie he was the uh repository for all the clones dude like everything went through him and it went to everybody um so i was <laughs> I love that he was all space and was able to pull it off. That's amazing. I had I had I had two lights to grow to grow my my plants under, and then I had a front room with a bunch of T fives. It's still there. Um, <laughs> I don't use it anymore. Thank thanks thanks to Skitty. I don't have to worry about moms anymore, which is great for me. Oh, yeah. um, but at one point, I I was holding twenty six to thirty five moms at any given time, and you... and there was a whole group, including Kirby, who knew that if they needed clones, they would just call me and come over, and I would just kind of turn my back, and they would just go in my room and invade <laughs> what they needed, and that's, that's you were the holder of the strains. Well, I, it's called easy are. maintenance too, right? Like it's easy maintenance for the mom. Let other people come over and <laughs> yeah. keep it pruned back for you, right? It, it really wasn't, you know, it really was, <laughs> it, it worked out fine for me, you know, at the time to be able to do that. And again, I had people passing through staying with me, like, you know, Skitty stayed with me when he moved out here. I had the doctor stay here for a while. Um, Sorter, um, God rest his soul, when he first moved to Colorado, he stayed with me for a couple of weeks. Um, you know, I've had a lot of people come and go and a lot of good people come and pass genetics. Sorter was another one who bred genetics kind of in the backyard secretly and hmm. everything that anybody else thought was worthy, he would try to breed F2s of. Yeah. And I also have a, in my repository some of his F2s from a number of years ago. Um, a lot of those are almost all Aloha White Widow crosses. That's so, cool. Very cool. Was that was that uh, through JoJo's work that he was doing F2s of or someone else's, like uh, NCG? Yeah, he was doing someone else. Someone I forget who originally put out the Aloha White Widow. I thought that was JoJo, but that I was wrong. JoJo. Was it, sure that was JoJo. it was JoJo. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of had a piece. lot of yeah, sort of had a lot of piece. mental health issues. Um yeah. he was um super obsessive, compulsive, and had paranoia. Yeah. But for some reason that strain um helped him get through his day. So, you know, he tried crossing it to all different kinds of things to see if he could get a better, more vigorous plant that would help him. Yeah, And in turn, um, he was one of those people who posted up on Cannabis World, you know, only minorly, mm -hmm. but all of his posts were like, oh, I just made these crosses and these crosses if anybody wants them. Yeah. And he was constantly sending out seeds to people. Um, I still, come, still making the rounds. Still yeah, to this I, day. I still come across yeah. uh, a few people I know who still grow. Um, he had an Aloha White Widow um crystal locomotive no no it was uh it might have been widow? by train wreck but oh it, when yeah that's said, the crystal oh, locomotive I think yeah, that, that train crystal wreck has ones. Yeah. yeah and i i think he had that cross and i think he he passed that around a lot it was yes. again everybody was trying to do their part to make sure everyone in the community had what they needed 
Yeah, his 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 uh, biggest, most famous one to this day. A lot of people don't know is the Grape Stomper clone came via JoJo, and uh, it was renamed and stuff. But that's where it came from, so it's cool to still see it moving around. Yep. Yeah, JoJo had some great time. great strains. He yeah. uh, remember he had came out with a candy haze and yep. uh, something Blowfish. other haze. Was the blowfish? Over, I thought blowfish was Dutch flowers. Dutch flowers. He did a lot with Dutch flowers. I've never been yeah. able to unravel it though. Like he did blowfish F twos, but he also sold seeds to RC that I think were sold as Dutch flowers. But I don't seeds. even know who Dutch wow. flowers was. Dude, dude, you're on the great track there, Matt. I honestly think that Dutch flowers was RC. That's what Reefer Man told me. He said now, that he I, was. I can't RC. confirm that, but oh. that's my hunch, dude. Because yeah, you know. That I used to deal with RC sense. a lot, right? Because, you know, yes. I was getting paid and stuff with them. Their writing styles were very similar, dude. Very similar. I have some emails that were like, wow, dude, just the way they word things, right? And they Great had copywriting. the best descriptions, right? Yeah, they had dude. The best descriptions, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so speaking of JoJo, dude, like such great strains, probably nothing went over like 30, 35 bucks, 40 absolutely. bucks max. Mm -hmm. Yeah you know max dude like nowadays you know you would just kill for that kind of stuff and it's oh, like yeah dude it, and it wasn't about the money back then it really wasn't it was all about yeah it was kind of cool to you know get a few bucks you know because it wasn't a lot of money but it was just collecting it was like you know almost like collecting baseball cards really like kirby says you know people collect seeds like baseball cards now but back totally. then it was crazy just ask Katsu, right? He, oh, he, yeah. you know, he's got one of the biggest baseball card collections I've ever seen. Oh, you remember uh, D-Man? Remember Academy? Yeah, oh, dude, yeah, that guy. Yeah, he bought <laughs> everything, everything. Fastest bidder guy. on CW there was. Yeah, he, 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 <laughs> he was a sniper, dude. What a yeah, sniper you couldn't, that guy you couldn't, was. You couldn't win a pack from him if he wanted it. Boy. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, he would That's snipe funny. you right to the end. Like. Uh, <laughs> Man, after my I own want, heart. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to say, you know, like I'm I'm really enjoying just being a fly on the wall for this conversation, but it sounds like just such a a, a radically different time to where we are oh, right dude, now. Dude, it was. It was so different. It was there there, you know, I'm not gonna say there wasn't snakes, but we weren't we weren't privy to them. I'm sure like some of the guys that were really you know, running the, the, the hard traps and out in California that were, you know, really facing hard time if they got caught, okay. you know, those guys, yeah, you could see where they were, you know, a little closer to the vest. They wouldn't share as much, but uh, it slowly, even those guys started coming out when it seen, you know, I remember that, uh, what was that guy uh, with the black, the Blackberry guy, Soma Blaze? Oh, Soma, Soma Blaze, yeah. yeah. Dude, like those guys, like, you know, at, at first, dude, that guy showed some pictures, blew everybody away. Oh, yeah. Right? Nobody had ever seen fucking weed like that. The gentle weed, and, bro. Yeah. And he would just wouldn't say anything. But then slowly, even he would come out. Right. So. But for the most part, it there was it, there was no sketchiness. No one was trying to get a leg up on anybody. It was like, dude, it's like, you know how he said we just wanted to make sure everybody got a taste of everything that was going around and get it to wherever we could i, d in the I world. do i do remember when i first got my first clones in the mail i think it was tau that sent them and i got the sour diesel the bubba kush train wreck ortega <laughs> help me out here guys wasn't there two more wasn't it like the holy grail of seven strains at the time well the, I, I don't know about your end but dude this was katsu sent me all my gear that i had that i uh -huh. was breeding with and that was maybe part of the seven strains at the bubba kush east coast sour diesel train wreck i had the uh a11 the genius cut um i think i had the chocolate diesel was c99 out yet yeah, I had the C99 yeah. cut. I had, uh, and that was, I believe, 180s cut. Um, that was the, the most prominent good cut at the time. I, I probably still is to this day. Um, and, dude, it was so cool. This is how cool it was. So, Katsu's in the States, Southern State, not going to say which one. He fucking UPS me those clones at 4:20 his time in a southern U.S. state, and they arrived in Ontario at my fucking door at 4:20 
the next day. They really? to be. Rooted clones, dude, <laughs> by a UPS, dude. And we never had that look. <laughs> we have to try that next time. <laughs> yeah. Well, we never tried UPS. I guess and that's then, true. Yeah, yeah, and then, like, uh, three years later, I called them all when Heaven's Stairway got busted because I figured yeah. fuck, they're coming for us, right? <laughs> so lost it all. But well, that's everybody. how easy it was back then. And nobody cared. Like, it was like nobody, everybody was looking for the Holy Grail, but everyone wanted to get it around, find everything, to get as many people looking for it as possible with many strains, popping billions of seeds. Everybody was from Seabay. Oh, yeah. It, it was just a wild, fun time. And it then seems it like got it was ruined. Super then, niche, right? It was a real small crowd at the time, much, well, much smaller yeah, than it is there, now. There was, there was different people in a group, and depending upon – which segment of a group you were in, you might get the clones before, you know, I might get them before D would get them or before Skitty would get them. But everybody knew I was going to give them to Skitty or vice versa. Yeah. Well, uh, we yeah. had we had guys like Wesos, uh, yeah. you know, who was sharing genetics kind of really as secretively as possible. You know, we had, you know, Barefoot, who was sending seeds to all of us behind the scenes without saying anything. I was good friends with, you know, I, I feel like I made a connection with like CTG. I was getting a bunch of stuff from him. Um, Great breeder, this, dude. Great to, breeder. Yeah, to this day, you know. Good gear uh, genetics. CT, Shout CTG out. and his brother. Shout out to good us. gear. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Good between good gear and, and his and his brother Medkind, we get a lot of our gear from them even today. You know, we we've, we've developed relationships that are, you know, years of of making. I I opened my home and had parties with you know upwards of 30 people on 420 and i didn't always know everybody who showed up at my house you know <laughs> those are um, fun barbecues but right. we had we all had a good time we all made good friends that's how we met kirby dude i flew you in know? from canada for those parties dude, they were fucking awesome they were better yeah. than the ones we had in canada <laughs> yep and then and then there were the cups you know out in california where we met all the guys that you know that we kind of hold dearly, old Sog, and you know Ross Arifo, NCGA, Elks, Elk Slayer, you know. How to NCGA? He's been good to me too over the years. So I was yeah. actually just texting with Elky last night about his Detroit uh, Red Wings. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we had we just had a, we had great people, you know. Uh, Every single one of them, uh, Chip Baker, you know, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Ed Larkus, TC, just, just a huge crowd of people. And everybody who, anybody Irish. who found a Pino of something, if you wanted it, all you had to do was ask. Yep. You know, it was, was good good times and safe times pre, pre the COVID stuff. That's for sure. Yeah, but we with our group and uh, our crew that we have going right now, we really tended to model a lot of what your guys' parties were about, how that all worked with clones, and bring that into the modern era. So hopefully we do it some justice a little bit, but it sounds like it was a freaking amazing time to be alive. I'm a little jealous, but I'm, I'm, I'm stoked also to hear about it from your guys' eyes. Like, was there any memorable moments during any of those parties you could think of where someone was, you know... Kind of wild. Absolutely, dude. Uh, I was at Howie's at one of those parties, and the first time I met Kirby, and that was the first time he Kirby gave me my first dab ever. It was the first time <laughs> I ever did a shatter. I think that was in like uh, I'm gonna say that's at least ten years ago now, like yeah. you know, 2014 or something. I don't know. It was a really nice day. Like I yeah. remember that. Kirby, Kirby was way ahead of the pack with the shatter. He was. Yeah, he fucking was. right, dude. I, I I haven't looked back since then, dude. I'm a dab fucking head, dude. I smoke more dabs than I ever do. <laughs> oh, I had to stop. I did too. I did too. I got sick after a while. No, no dabs. dabs. It's COPD knocking at the door. No dabs. <laughs> Small one hits. Hash yeah. fine. Bubble fine. Just something about those dabs. No, thank you. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I mean, memorable, memorable for me about the parties, of course, is, I mean, all the people who I met, including some who are no longer with us, like Zoch, oh, you yeah. know, Matt, yeah. um, and Sorter, and, you know, and I, we still have a lot of good friends. Our friend Bud Spleefman came to a lot of the parties. We're still friends with, you know, Kirby because of the parties and Green Mofo and and one of the funny stories about uh, one of the parties, uh, Kirby, the first party Kirby came to, he bought a brand new dab rig. It was over a $200 dab rig. He got one hit out of it, and then he dropped it on my concrete patio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> We laugh about it now. It was kind of a stinging memory. And he always joked about it. He never once got upset. You know, Kirby, that, that's the kind of guy Kirby is, you know, just yeah. rolling with the punches. But uh, didn't did Kirby have a whole dab case? Like a he did. specialized he did. briefcase with all the different oh, I bet. <laughs> folded yes. parts we call of those, papers? We call those he trap traveled. trophies. Yeah. And, and then when it became unfashionable to use the torch if you remember he not only brought the case with the dab rig but he brought like the battery to heat everything he up yeah. oh he brought the, the whole setup and and... it was like mobile dabs yeah. yeah yeah he had he had quite the setup and he was the first person i ever met who was making the giant bazooka tubes yeah, <laughs> to, yeah. To, you know to blow hash it was kind of a cool cool thing you know so yeah, he was doing it at scale like when i first met him he was he was the dab man at scale in colorado big time. oh yes yeah. dude dude he was the guy who was buying the giant tubs of fucking uh you know fucking butane yeah. it's like he, he went to the supplier or something and the supplier's like dude we we can order that in for you and he's like oh yeah order me as much as you can get <laughs> <laughs> what are you using it for oh it's a science project or something science <laughs> yeah science <laughs> So, what one, one of the most well-known things with you, D-Man, is the Spice Brothers era. And yep. it was you and a person named Fett. Can you talk a little actually, bit about how that came to be? Sure. Actually, uh, Fett was uh, he's he was in Australia. Um, just a, a wild man, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, we just hit it off because he was a big uh indoor grower in australia which which you think when you think of australia you don't really think indoor grow you no. think more like outdoor right but um he and not to say he didn't do outdoor but i don't think the um you know the ground in most of australia is indicative of doing outdoor grows like you really need to like you know like an auger to dig the, like, like the ground it's just so hard and you need to condition everything so Dude, he was doing indoor stuff, and I, how I uh, stumbled onto him, he was posting pics of these fucking water jacket cooled lights, like these high oh, pressure yeah. sodium lights. Oh, I remember were, those. Right, and I'm like, what the fuck are they doing down under? Dude? Like, I've right? never yeah. seen anything. <laughs> well, and those he, are the ones. Was, those are ones where they are actually putting down into the plants, like not yeah, over them. Yeah, they were down right. inside with yeah. the water tubes. Yeah, and he could put your fucking hands right around the lake, like no heat, and obviously in Australia. Anyways, we just started talking, and uh, we just started trading some strange. Again, it was all free. He's like, "Hey, mate, I got something you know here." He's like, "Can you, what do you got? What do you grow in Canada?" I sent him some stuff, and uh, next thing you know, it was like he started breeding some of my stuff. I started breeding some of his stuff, and we were like it's a good collab let's put it together and and we did a few just our own things and that's right around you know the time that just about a year maybe two years before heaven stairway went down and brothers grim went out of business wow they stopped selling seeds on heaven stairway yeah right away right and dude if you wanted brother grim seeds back in the day they were like 150 bucks a pack. Like they were yeah. top of the line. That was big bucks back then, right? And not everybody could obviously afford that. So when they stopped selling seeds, and I, I knew that because again, my close relationship with RC at the time. And uh, so we reached out to um, Mr. Soul at the time and said, dude, do, do you mind if we, you know, 
knock off some of your strains, make some F2s and send them out on the sea bay for everybody to fucking get, you know, a chance for your genetics. And sure. he gave us permission to do that. And dude, that's basically what we did. And that's how we started Spice Brothers was just basically knocking off everything Brothers Grimm, right? And uh, dude, for, that did some really crazy things over there. Mm. Uh, again, once I got the A11 from Katsu, that was really cool. That helped me with a bunch of the genius crosses. But genius the green, was wonderful. Oh, absolutely. And Fett did the all the green giant and Rosetta the Vietnamese Stone black crosses. Too? What's that? Did he have the Vietnamese black stuff too? Yes, Is too. So he was one of the ones... Uh, him and Cushy Man are the only two that I know personally that actually got the uh, anonymous Vietnamese black. Yeah. And dude, he crossed that Vietnamese black with legit Neville's haze. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Oh, dude. And, and I never smoked it, but I've seen pictures of it and I, I talked to people that did smoke it. It was like, wow, like trippy sativas. Like, and that was, was that, Fat's gig. Was that he, he was the trippy sativa guy. What did you call that one? 303 Spice or something weird? Yeah, three, oh, it was 303 Spice, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, look at that. And, dude, I remember even all the, uh, the Green Giant uh, crosses, like huge buds, dude. Huge buds, like yeah. huge buds. And then he got into that uh, Is he? the Lou Han one, too. Oh, yeah. Where, yeah. Uh, he crossed that with the, the Neville Hayes. Uh, again, he loved the Sativas. I guess Australia is a good good uh, place to do the sativas outdoors if you can find the suitable soil to do it uh then uh, we just once heaven's stairway went down he went over to that um what is that uk place because at the same time as heaven stairway was getting busted seeds in the uk became legal you you like gyp gypsy the depot See, no no uh, gypsy no no the other guy doc something uh oh doctor oh. Dr. Dr. green thumb doc green thumb no yeah. no 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 this is not he's, no? in, he's in canada here that's uh, a canadian doc guy chronic. Yeah. Doc chronic. That's a chronic. oh doc yeah, chronic. He had, okay. yeah he had a forum and he was selling seeds over in the uk so that's where ferret and i ended up our relationship ended there right so like there was like at, literally i shut down everything right after heaven stairway went down so yeah so I sent, a lot of people <laughs> okay, yeah. but i said uh i sent all my stock to to doc chronic that was anything spice brother related and fett and i just split it up after that and uh dude then he just fell off the face of the earth i wish i could find that guy i have Me reached too. out i i can't find anybody that knows him the last thing I did here is that he got bit by a black type ant. Oh Jesus! And I think that's pretty pretty rough snake in, in Australia. And I he he made it, but I think he got pretty fucked up from that. Um, Who is this? I, fat. Oh, okay. So yeah, I don't know what happened to him, dude. I've had people reach out to me over the years asking where he is, and I'm like, dude, if you find him, let me know. And hell, I'm on looking for him. Like, yeah, I would love to reach out and get a hold of him again, right? But uh, you remember his strain, Dizzy, the the Aussie yeah, Bass yeah, type? Yep, yeah. definitely not Hives. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not definitely hives. not. <laughs> yeah, Dizzy that was the the more. weird, totally I don't look like weed weed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, ABC. The, yeah, the not ABC. <laughs> not abc <laughs> yeah, right it's not abc it's not ABC never. Never. uh never release it dude uh he would never even send me any seeds he crossed that shit with everything but uh everybody wanted it but nobody could get it i wonder why why he held it so know. tight i know hyde worked on it too or something similar yeah. maybe not abc maybe too, not the same so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again you know i and now i know that uh inspector's working with it like he's oh, got yeah. some crosses of it out there so you know i think it's very interesting i'd love to grow some right i think it's cool looking you know like i'll get you some I don't, know what, over. I don't know what it smokes like but it's interesting um yeah that that's the spice brothers thing dude uh it, it was a good relationship yeah, we had a lot of fun we had yeah, a lot of fun that's one of those uh, things like whenever I would find, even today, if I see Spice Brother seeds, I get really stoked and try to get them from whoever has them. So like that, that's a very fond spot in my heart. You know, like when I see Spice Brothers. That's special to me. It really uh, absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to get some. Actually, I have a couple of packs here. I'm not sure what they are. And somebody sent them to me with uh, some original D-Man seeds in the original Heaven Stairway pack too. Actually, I just sent the uh, G Blackwood or the Cushy Man. 
because uh, he's nice. looking for that the vomit fino fino again. <laughs> yeah, you also yeah. did endless sky work, right? Yeah, yeah, I helped develop that with Doc Greenfilm. That's right. Yeah. Tell me more That's about a, it. Uh, it's Iranian Good. indica um, crossed with uh, a strain of his called grenadine, yeah. which is a G13 cross. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure which G13, AG13. Yeah. Um, he had very few seeds of it. He was building a house and he sent me, I don't know, I don't know, a couple of dozen seeds. I worked through them and made some, you know, F2s for him and sent him back like a couple thousand seeds. And that was my part with it. And he ran with it from there and made his own selections. And I actually sent him the mom back with the seeds that I had found. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Cool guy. Uh, he's still in business now. He's doing yeah. lots of good stuff up here, dude. Like, One of yeah. the earliest feminized seed sellers that I remember that was Absolutely. in the North America. Uh, right up there with the cl the classic clone company from Seabay. Yep. I yep. forget who they were, but they were the first ones to get a hold. And that was, uh, I think it was Hive again, you know, selling his uh, yeah. wh whatever EXE? it was. Yeah, yeah we, we tried it, the EXE. It, it worked on a couple of strains and a couple it wouldn't. Um, yeah that's yeah. that's that's what people don't realize like with reversals like it's not all inclusive no matter what spray you're using no matter what type it's it really is dependent on the health of the plant the type of plant the genetics of the plant and how it reverses absolutely so, yeah. i yes. absolutely agree yes. yeah. i just found uh i don't know if you could see these yeah i can see those what you got <laughs> that is a jojo candy haze and this is something by barefoot Alpha Kush, it looks like. Alpha oh. Kush F, 2000, and I don't know. I still have some Crystal Locomotive BX2 that JoJo did. Nice. I, I, I'll tell you, that was a good strain. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it it was, was a very good strain. Hey, and no and so were his train wreck S1s. I <laughs> love those. Yeah. yeah. He did killer stuff. Way, way yep. ahead of his time. He was. Yeah. I honestly think that, and this is just my opinion, I honestly think a lot of the Kush Finos that are going around now all came from Sea Bay, dude. Those first feminized Bubba oh, Kush I crosses. Bet. I bet. Yeah. Uh, that's when all of a sudden that you started, you know, seeing that Katsu found a, a, a Katsu one, and then there was Ghost found one, and yeah, then ooh. there was the Abusive, and... Dude, oh, the abuse of was great. Right. And then they all just kind of came around the same time that that first feminized Bubba Kush cross came out. It just, it makes you know, sense. Things, th things that make it you does go, make a lot know, of sense. Kind of yeah. does, right? But uh, whether they are or not, I don't know. It's just funny that they were everywhere and there's so many different phenos. And it's like, well, we all know that it's really hard to get an identical phenol yep. from the mom. Absolutely. Right. You can, but it's there. So, but there's close and different nuances, and I think that's my personal opinion. That's a and lot the of where these. The story goes is that the Bubba Kush seeds that went out were half OG Kush and half of a plant called Bubba that was a Northern Lights plant. So, like Northern Lights OG Kush, you cross them, you're gonna get OG Kush expressions even in the S1. You know what I mean? Abs like absolutely, yeah. and, and they may not be identical to that mom that exactly, was used, but they're close -ish, yeah. ish, right? It's like any uh, S1, right? Like you, you get it recessive it's, pop out yeah yeah howie you mentioned peabud earlier was did you ever hear of it referred to by any other name well no i got to colorado i lived in wyoming for a number of years before i came to colorado by the time i got here it was the colorado peonia bud the peabud if you were lucky, you knew somebody in that specific area or somebody, you know, local who knew somebody. Um, and you could get it, you know, pretty handily back in the day. And um, the, the clones were held really tightly by the group in the valley. It was not something that was readily shared with outsiders. Um, at one point, um, I had the clone, um, but it was before I had a medical debacle back before I met most everybody. And uh, I lost pretty much everything I had after that and could not get it back. Um, 
I am uh, really hopeful CTG, who had was originally from Colorado, um, who's now working with some Peabud that he got from um, assorted GCD? sources. Um, and I'm hoping that he gets the gets it. He's saying it's going in the right direction. So I have really good faith in him uh, as far as his breeding and abilities go. So um, it it was uh, it it was called the Paonia Paralyzer. Yeah, there you go. There you go. It I had just need to say it. Yeah, it had it had a couple of other you know snazzy names depending upon where you were. I happen to I happen to live in the Denver area. Um, but if you went up north to like Fort Collins where CSU is, uh, everybody referred to it as the Paralyzer. Everybody knew it was the same bud. And um, you just could, you couldn't get the piney taste out of your mouth. Uh, it was that really thick, beautiful, heavy smoke. Um, that's perfect for a you know nice Colorado night sitting out under the stars or under a campfire. You know, um, a, a few years ago, one of his friends, um, uh, Muir, hit me up and he's like, "Hey, I have some um, seeds." And I didn't know who Muir was at the time, like I wasn't from your guys's era. I just thought he was some guy on Facebook that people knew that was kind of old school. He's like, "Hey, I have some uh, Netherland Purple Indica, but I'm pretty sure this is the I think he said Payona Purple Paralyzer." He gave me the seeds of it, and. I was immediately like, oh, maybe I should give these to Peabud because he called himself Peabud. So he's looking for it. I have regretted that ever since. Like, I want to see what's in those things. But luckily, I actually gave them to my friend Matt Elite to give to Peabud. And I think they stayed with Matt for whatever reason. So they may be coming back. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Let's see if we can get it back. Got thumbs up there. I'll tell yeah, you what. Your luck. You know. And like D said, yeah, it may not be a perfect expression of what what oh, it no, was, yeah. but it's just like uh, it's just like anything. It's um, you, you know, I, SGP. It's still good pot, right? You know? <laughs> um, we, we were joking about that, you know, uh, with the East Coast Sour D, which we got back, you know, not that long ago, and. A whole lot of people were like, oh, it kind of grows funky. It doesn't have really tight nugs. And and you hear people and you're just like, could you just smoke it? Yeah, right? like, don't, don't evaluate it based on the fact that the name is from a 20-year-old strain. Like, evaluate it based on what it does for you, you know? I mean, it's That's still as good today as it was 20 years ago when we oh, first yeah. got our hands on That's it. what's up, Skitty. Sour Diesel. Thank you, thank yeah. you Skitty. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, someone identified it as the 96 cut to me. If that Man, rings that, any that, bells. There's so I many know. different cuts people talk about now. Like mm -hmm. and, and They've named so many. I mean, I think there's only a few cuts back in the day that people had, and now there's like 90 <laughs> Thanks to the different seed lines and whatnot, and people making claims. But yeah, oh, the one the one name that I do hear attached to that a lot is Muir too. His name. Uh -huh. is, yep, I've heard. He that. was passing it uh, with the seventy seven crew. Oh, that's why I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So were any yeah. of you guys in the seventy seven crew? I was not. Not no. me. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, I'm good friends with you know. Several people who who definitely Work. were, yeah. you know, we we were really good friends. Skitty and I and and D man even knew him. We were good friends with Scoosh, yeah, oh, yeah who Scoosh. was a you know key member of the seventy seven, um, and you know well, a few and, of those are seventy seven himself too, right? We're yeah, yeah, of course. With them, right? so yeah, yeah, we exactly. Just, we were part yeah. of the pool of enough kids to be part of that club yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, back at back at that time, we weren't the cool kids. Well, and again, no, like right? I said, dude, it was a different time. People were really, you know, after having Stairway got popped, people went fucking tight lip. Went like, tight, it was yeah. like private sites started popping up everywhere. And it was like, because like legit, dude, you could fucking go to jail in the States for a long time. Fuck, like, nobody dude, was, was going, going to jail in Canada, right, for growing weed ever. And even still now with it legal. You'd have to really fuck up to go to jail, but in the states, dude, like, yeah, 
Wow. I was yeah. growing in Louisiana, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it went, ended up at Angola. Yeah. yeah, but you were also you were also one. You know, you also were immediately like, okay, I can open a private site, and you did. Mm-hmm. And like you salvaged, right? You salvaged how many of us like right away from that core group of you know, CWOG people that we've been interacting with already for a number of years. I mean, you know. So, so I did have the Raccoon Lodge open before we did the cabana? Yeah, was yeah. That the yeah dude. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 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 And remember, remember all the, <laughs> you know, remember all the people that were there uh-huh. that aren't, ne- you know, we, are, we aren't necessarily in total contact with every day now, but I mean, we had you know, Bud Miser, and we had, you know, Moonshine, and Dr., you know, Mr. Dank, or Dr. Dank, or, you know, we had, we had the doctor, oh. you know, that's, that's before the doctor yeah. came, and the, the reason he came and stayed at my house is because he met me, you know, through the La- Raccoon Lodge, you know, uh, when, he, you know, when he needed a place to crash out here, and same as you, you know, like, you know, the, the Raccoon Lodge tightened up a lot of our friendships, you mm-hmm. know, that we already had because we moved from kind of becoming friends in public and then being forced into a private kind of smaller world where and, some of us really bonded very well together. Was we this were how, good. how the, the refuge of Overgrow, is this how essentially, the, as we're getting into this, the Raccoon Lodge into the Canna Cabana started then? Yeah, we were... Uh, we were in TCB first, wasn't that? Bef- and then TCB with Clips and CCG yeah, and Bucky yeah. Nugs yeah. running it. Yeah. And, yeah. and when they discontinued, that's when I think y'all said, Steve, open up a Raccoon Lodge yeah. we, or, or something like that. It, incorporated everybody from there into the Raccoon Lodge. And mm-hmm. I think at that time, that's when Cannabis World, where we were all mostly hanging out, it was starting to get crazy. Like, you know, there was the trolls from Overgrow were starting to, you know, migrate over to, you know, the, I think there was a shark tank at Cannabis World too. And it just started getting messy. And it was like, you know, that's when the sharing was, became a lot more private and where the private sites came in much handier, right? Like you didn't want to really broadcast so much then exactly people were starting to realize that it took work to find Pinos and they weren't so willing to just willy nilly throw them out there to just anybody. Oh, a lot of people started to hoard strains. Absolutely. Right. Well, you know, well, and again, depending upon your perspective, because I remember at one of the big parties in California when, you know, I, I first met, you know, uh, inspector Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, he was explaining to me how he was a third generation grower and that some of the strains were in his family from his grandfather's time yeah. and that he had made a family commitment not to share them at that time um, till he, you know, till, you know, he had an agreement with his father and grandfather that, you know, there would come a point where he would share them, but it, it wasn't then. And he was trying to explain to me that, so does it make me, you know, a greedy person if I can't share something that I promised my father and grandfather I wouldn't share? No, dude, it doesn't. You know, I I hold the man. He's a really great, great guy. And I really love him for his principles. He was very firm in what he could and couldn't share. And. You know, he developed that into a, a, a huge, you know, situation like he's got going on now. And, you know, God bless him. He, you know, he didn't betray his family. He didn't betray his morals. And he was able to do what he, you know. He's still and that now way. He, and now he's sharing those genetics. Yeah, but he it, he's very, still very, very hardline honest. Uh, probably one of the biggest influences in my life on uh what I would I model my character and, and how I carry myself. Uh, he, he is the most honest person. I know it's crazy. I've seen people accidentally, you know, send him $14,000 and, and him return it because they didn't put, you know, what they wanted and he doesn't want to give them the wrong thing. It's, it's crazy what I've seen him do. Yeah. Wow. 
Yep. And, and the I, guy is just a walking book of knowledge. Yes. You know, yes. like when I when I met him in California at one of the parties there, it was like, dude, he was so much younger than everybody else too, right? Yeah. It was like, and you know, we're all doing sampling these strains, you know, if I try to go through 32 strains in like two days or something at the Cannabis World Cup. And and here's the inspector over there, just like a college kid taking an exam, right? And he's like fucking just so serious yeah. and dude, like yeah, pretty cool. Those were really fun times. Like yeah, we the, the parties were fucking wild, man. And and those parties were wa just walking books of knowledge. I yeah, mean, dude, like, just to, 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 didn't matter what situation you were in. I'm a small scale, really little grower. But I mean, there were guys with big outdoor grows. There were guys with big indoor grows, guys with little outdoor grows, little indoor grows. It was just a full spectrum. But they included, you know, Inspector, Shaba, the doctor, Ross Arifo, NCGA, D-Man, you know. Over, the overtokes. You know. And the overtokes, Kendo. You know, Kendo, yeah. God, God bless Kendo. You know, he and I, <laughs> he and I are brothers from another mother that just don't see the world from the same <laughs> set of eyes. I He's love a wild guy. man. Uh, he is a wild man. You know, I've I've spent I spent a week um, with him up on one of his you know grows um, when yeah. he was still down in Cali, uh, out in the boonies and it was a crazy time he's a he's a, a super crazy crazy guy um we had an episode you know. with him we have a full episode. yeah we know well i, I see it I, I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you've seen it I yeah, mean, yes, I, sir. yeah we, we watched we watched i'll just say for the record when it came down to whose idea it was for the secret mods at the cabana if kendall thinks it was his idea honestly dude that was fucking 18 years ago i don't know whose idea it was if he says it was his he's probably right and kudos to him for thinking about it the only thing i'll say about that it was, was it was shitty for me because all the mods were hidden but it was me that always had to go deliver the oh, bad yeah. news or deliver the punishment right it was always like all oh, these guys had secret fucking moderator handles right the big banana or the rock mm -hmm. lobster or something right comes in rowdy nudie you know whatever <laughs> but it was always d-man that was like Hey, you can't do that because the mod team said, well, D-Man's an asshole. Well, okay, man, whatever. Have you lies the crown, bro. That's how it goes. I know, I know, right? It's yeah, how it goes. Honestly, I you know, shit, bro. Kendall, Kendall was a big part of the cabana, dude. Like, getting the cabana yeah. up and running, for sure, dude. Like, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Same thing with Old Song. Absolutely, same thing, dude. Absolutely. Same, same, same thing with Muggles. God rest his soul. <laughs> Muggles, mm -hmm. Buckwheat. Buckwheat. You know. You know, I'm we sure had... there was a couple other ones in there too that just and a shout out to Funky Nugs, Funky Nugs too, yeah, right? Funky Nugs, yes, yeah, and Science. Oh, and Budweiser, JJ Jameson, yeah, oh, J. Jonah Jameson, yeah. JJ Jameson, who's still around and peeks in oh, yeah. now and again, but yeah, you know, we don't hear from him much. Um, but yeah, we've you know, to this day, we still see you know people pop in and out from. 20 years ago and it's nice to know that some folks are still rocking it hard mm -hmm. um got good good breeders like jace the case are still out there stash still out there working hard yeah i think uh jace he's a new zealand fellow too right yes yes oh wow yeah, oh, interesting. interesting he actually popped in recently since the uh re reborn of the rebirth of the cabana i think so yeah, yeah i saw he's that. still around yeah. yeah he's still around so in terms of timeline, when was the the original kind of inception of the cabana? December the second, two thousand and six, <laughs> my birthday. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, right so as yeah, I was when, coming online. That's how I remember uh, it. Yeah, when uh, Cannabis World went down, we went over to the Raccoon Lodge. Kitty uh, Skitty hosted us there, and uh, we we sort of just reached out to some members at the raccoon lodge who we thought would be a good fit you know like muggles and you know old sog and you know buckwheat and howie, howie. and obviously everybody and budweiser uh, we had, budweiser. A, bunch of, we yeah, had we a bunch of people help us in the beginning you know? absolutely and then we just banged it out over five months there you know we were just racking ideas off each other's head what would work what would, wouldn't work 
that's where we kind of realized, you know, we didn't want a shark tank. <laughs> no, <laughs> <sure>. no politics. <laughs> no politics. Uh, we obviously thought that, you know, firearms wasn't a good fit. And no. uh, uh, we were, you know, we were unique like that. Absolutely. I think from some of the other sites. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people didn't like us like that. We, we were known as the Care Bears. I think yeah. the Care Bears. Uh, well, I mean, because... it, it stood the test of time, though, like doing it a certain way, keeping it a certain way, keeping it private all those years, letting certain people in. Sounds like you did it like an onion where there were layers and you involved certain people in that fit better and, and molded better. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when we first opened it, you know, we it was sort of like, if, if I'm not mistaken, these guys can correct me. It was sort of like we left the threads open, somebody would nominate somebody in and they were kind of like get a vote on it. And then we started realizing that that's not really fair. You know, everybody sort of deserves a second chance. If, if a member, a current member is vouching for them, well, they're putting their account on the line. We felt that was good enough. So we just started locking those threads for nominations. If somebody wanted you in, dude, you were in. It was simple as that. Yeah. And Man. it worked good that way for a long yep. time. We had a lot of participation. And then when Colorado went legal, then a lot of people came in from Colorado. Like so it was mm -hmm. just like a boom. That's when Kirby and you know Green Mofo and all those guys, even Big Sir. It was just it was yeah, just, we, had, we had an influx of members there. Right? Is that when Tierra Rojo got into? Tierra uh, Rojo came in. Paco came in for Paco a while. Paco came in. Everybody came in for a little while, especially a lot, anybody who was friends with Kirby. Yeah. When Kirby came in, just a whole influx of guys in his kind of little core group at that time came in with him. And, um, you know, a lot of them have, have always been members. Some have just popped back in. Paco popped back in not that long ago as well. I know Paco, yeah. Um, I think it's great to see um, just the fact that there's a renewed interest. We were, you know, we were on a, yeah, I was the last captain of the ship. These two guys ahead of me led, led the place for a lot of years and had everything going pretty good, but you know, uh, as people age and attrition and you don't have as many older members meeting new people to invite in, we became kind of the road to, you know, self-defeating prophecy where, you know, I was, you know, I was asking people for donations and looking at the thing as a dinosaur, like, when yeah. when do we go extinct? When we run out of when we run out of donations? Yeah. Well, the key the key to me is kind of like what do, what do I do to help lead the ship into a new era? And you know that's where Curbs comes in. You know the the the, the line on the story. You know. When did you guys um, start talking about doing that with Curb about well, maybe changing hands? He, he approached me. In all honesty, to my my two friends sitting here. In all honesty, Kirby approached me last year, last summer, um, <laughs> early in the summer. Um, Steve was having an off season. Darren was in the hospital. Jeez. I kind of hinted something to Darren about it way back then. And he seemed really amenable to potentially letting Kirby, you know, take over. But Steve's you know, situation was such that he and I weren't able to actually communicate out, you know, uh, what Kirby wanted to yeah. do. So I kind of kept it in the back of my head. And I literally said to Kirby, you know, give me some time, you know, let, let Darren get out of the hospital. Let, you know, let Steve get through his stuff. Everything, everything magically worked itself out and Kirby actually called me that week and said, Hey, you know, you talk to those guys anymore. And I go, no, but I will right now. I'll call you back in a little while. Hung up the phone with them, called D. Called that was actually Steve. a Friday. <laughs> yep. And uh, then called Kirby back and said, dude, you're the man. You, you've got, you've got a plan. You've got an idea. It'll save us from going extinct. I really like the concept. 
We've always worried, you know, as we've gotten older, things have become more legal. When Darren originally took this thing on under his belt, he had to worry about Canadian laws, Canadian police. I was living here in Colorado where things were always fairly mellow. Steve, who was bouncing from Louisiana to New York and then eventually ended up here, thanks to, you know, some <laughs> coaxing from my family and I. <laughs> yes. Um, got him out to a good place, you know, a place we knew he'd be able to establish. And here we all are, you know, it's years later. And the site's still running itself just fine. When I took it over, it was still running itself just fine. There's nothing wrong with the site except that. As older members pass, and we've lost a lot of good people, yeah. as people's situations change and they leave and don't come back, you've got, you know, a handful of guys who are between 40 and, you know, 80 years old. We're not bringing on any new blood. Can I interrupt and ask, you know, what did you guys think of Instagram when it was coming online? I don't even know when that was now. I think about it. Um, but how aware of you, how aware, aware of Instagram were you guys when it was emerging? Or how, when did you guys look at it and think, oh, this is, this is like the new form that people are communicating in? If it weren't for Darren and Steve <laughs> talking to me about Instagram, I'm the least technologically uh, inclined of the group. Darren starts telling me, yeah, you don't have to go to like, you know, I see you are. You want to look at pop pictures, you just have to go to this this new thing. I'm like, new thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the, most people just post pictures. <laughs> and there's like thousands of and I like fishing and fishing. Just yeah, you could go and look at thousands of fish and fishing pictures. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. And now you can go and look at thousands of pot pot pictures. I'm like, oh, really? Fishing and okay. pot. So fishing and pot, exactly, right? Yeah. So it now was, you got me was, interested. Yeah, it was really Dean and Steve who got me to even understand that there was something out there doing that kind of stuff. Well, I actually joined Instagram in 2015. I'm not sure when it came out. The only reason I joined is because um, my young daughter at the time, uh, I don't know how old would she be then? She would be 15. Um, she had an Instagram account, and I don't know. She was telling me she had all these followers from school. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll download this app. And, you know, I, I follow my daughter. Dude, she's got 870 fucking people following her. <laughs> Instagram, right? I'm like, what the fuck is this? Who are these people following my little girl, right? Yeah, right. I, I just tear a strip off her. Wait, get off that platform. I'm gonna... She's like, Dad, <laughs> they have pod pictures. I'm like, what? Wait, what? What? <laughs> I started looking. Oh, fuck, dude. There's like really cool pod pictures. I, I start finding people I know from the cabana. I'm like, oh, this guy's over here too. Yeah. This is cool. How do I work this, right? So for me, it was 2015 and yeah, I just never really looked back. I was it was kind of cool. I mean, because we had such old V bulletin software at the at the command, yeah. it was like it was really hard to post pictures because it really sucked, right? Didn't yeah, like it was hard. Upload. It was hard, right? Didn't <laughs> like it, right? So it was like Instagram was easy. So I seen right away, dude. Like once I seen that, dude. There's like thousands of cannabis accounts there. I was like, wow, this this is the new trend. Okay, I think the forums are gonna go really bye bye now, right? Yeah. Uh, well, luckily, I don't think that happened, dude. I don't. It no. turned out obviously, as we all know, Instagram sucks. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, they suck for cannabis. Well, yeah, right? I would love to hear your thoughts on on that as well. Uh, well I dude, I, I've got don't... six. Sorry, I've got six thousand followers on Instagram, and Ooh. anytime I make a post, nice ten, 10 people like it. Yeah, you know, right. it's like <laughs> I, I just like, dude. This, I'm not even a big guy, you know. It just says I sell <laughs> cannabis seeds, or you know, I breed cannabis seeds, and that's enough. Instagram yeah. algorithm says no, fuck you, dude. You, you nobody I know sees. the feeling. Yeah, not even your followers, right? So it's yeah. like, yeah, it sucks, dude. And I see like all these big accounts, you know, like like CSI, and you know, like he, he's got he like same quarter, issue. You know, a quarter of a million uh, followers, and he's got like you know five accounts, and they all have the same because they're all backup accounts because one gets banned or shut down, and he just has to start. It's just 
it's a time suck, dude. It really, it's really bad. And that's when one Kirby thing... came in and said, dude, let's mm. make the forums relevant again. You know, you can post pictures and on the forum. It doesn't really, it was never about pictures uh, for, for the rebranding or the rebirth. It was just about, you know, the comments, making it more uh, relevant for the communication of the plant. You know, on Instagram, you can't yeah. do that. You know, you, so one I'll interrupt here and just say that sure. one thing we've discussed in the past is like how kind of going back to some of the early points you guys made, how well connected you all were and how meaningful those connections were. Uh, one thing about Instagram is obviously everyone's quite alienated and quite isolated. And you have these very uh, brief interactions with people on a post and then the next day it's gone. Right. I mean, not, it's not gone, but like you're going to have to go find it in the abyss of the timeline. Yeah. Um, and so you don't really have that kind of accumulation of history as you would on a forum thread. Or, or the, even the interaction, you know, from the original poster, whoever posts that awesome pic, you know, they can post their little description of what this is, but it's not indicative of having a conversation, you know, or, or even asking a question, you know, it's like, we, we need the help desks again. We need these breeders to have their own forums where they can, you know, communicate with their customers. So it's just, and it's just like if you look at the Cabana now, just about every breeder that has their own forum there, dude, they've been an original member, like great either from inception or from the Colorado influx of 2012. Like, you know, and some of these guys are fucking huge breeders, right? Like so as we all know. And yeah. that's what they need. Uh, if we can get content there and get their customers to come and interact with them, we know they're busy people, but you know, even like inspector dude, he's chiming in, people are posting stuff about his strains and that's what we wanted. We wanted place for the breeders to be able to talk to the customers, you know, and, and answer some questions like it used to be, you know, like get away from the Instagram. Yeah. You can post the pretty pictures there, but we know that when, you know, inspector posts a pic, dude, it's not hitting a quarter of a million followers. Yeah, like, exactly. dude, it's if he hits 1%, maybe 2%, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, whereas, oh. you know, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not being naive saying that we're going to replace Instagram. It's not about the pictures at the cabana. It's about the interaction and, and about even the smaller guys, like these up and coming breeders. That's who we really want to help. Give them a platform that yep. Instagram can't do. Like these guys are just a shadow band with, you know, a thousand followers just because they're posting cannabis pictures. Well, come over to the cabana, dude. What Kirby's giving it fucking free reign, dude post your seeds post your grows you know we're gonna eventually you know hopefully have a maybe sort of like a sea bay kind of platform you know like that would be cool for up and coming breeders again to get a name right yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah so just, just to make it really clear to the the people listening um and watching the can cabana is now open again Oh, absolutely, um, dude. Just to be it's really 100%. clear. Yeah, we haven't actually said that, but yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely yeah. inviting yeah, people yeah. to go check it out. It went yeah. back public 100% uh, on January 1st. So, dude, please register. Uh, it's it's wide open. You can look at the forum now. Um, you can see the 18 years of history that's there from everything that, that has been posted. Um, lots of skitty picks, skitty grows. I'm sure there's a few Howie grows in there, lots of D-man grows. But uh, if you want to post, you got to register. You know, so it's we're it's not a hard ask. Uh, you can read it; it's there for you to read. We hope that you see something that entices you to make you want to join, um, because there's up and coming things. There's things that are coming. You know, um, probably some giveaways. You know, we're gonna have some cabana packs, things like that, with some seeds, maybe from some up and coming breeders. You know, we just want to see people posting their grows, and if we can help, like as we still know. Lots of people are still just new growers right now. We're seeing it in the cabana. You know, people are saying, I'm just got two or three grows under my belt. This is kind of cool. It's like, yeah, we forgot about that. You know, we all got so tired of answering the same old <laughs> questions over and over again that we forget that, dude, we have to pass this knowledge on. Yeah. We, we can't. We can't just not, you know, we can't rely on other people they're, just to do it for us. They're probably more new growers now than ever before. Definitely. Yeah. Um, 
and, and uh, they have so many more tools than we have, right? You know, LED lights and you know, yeah. all, all the cool <laughs> toys to have, right? Um, and so everybody knows Kirby was supposed to be here, but he got stuck in an airport. So yes, you know, maybe, maybe a separate episode with him or another one of these because there's there's so absolutely much we got to get Kirby here because you know we can we can give you the whole history of how we got to the cabana, but it's Kirby's idea and his baby from here, dude, and he's got big plans and he's going to make forums relevant again. You know, like we're not going to say we're going after other forums but dude we're going after other forums <laughs> yeah yeah well, the, ones, the ones that were there like i i don't have any good relationship with them honestly my my whole my whole relationship with that was i would go to a forum it was usually run by someone who ran a seed bank they'd see i have a seed company and if i don't interact with them in certain ways i'd be banned and that's really my my whole experience with forums. Yeah. it just didn't happen that way and that's really what happened at the cabana you know the original because that was part of the other things that we had like we said no seed sales you know yep. we didn't want any seed spam so we literally by policy pushed all of our friends <laughs> oh, wait. out Ooh, away, i'm right? still scared and, of posting seed stuff there bro like it's yeah, so weird yeah. it's all good now dude you know kirby said it's good to go that's right rowdy I, nudie. I, yeah, I think, rowdy nudie we were yeah. he's retired dude we Rock, Rocky, rowdy yeah anymore. but the reality is that we need a new approach to move ahead. The dinosaur either collapses and goes extinct or we move ahead. Having had all those parties and interacted with a lot of guys who are 20 or 30 years younger than me who have other aspirations and ideas, which I wasn't thinking about or didn't, didn't ever think about, I guess, um, you know, really brings a whole new perspective to what what we want to do. We don't, you know, we remember the days when at Seed Bay, you know, like if you bought something from, you know, Doc Green Thumbs, and you had a question and you posted up in his help forum, like, what do, how do I grow this, or how long does it, you know, yeah. you get either him to answer himself or one of his helpers or you know a group of four or five other people would jump in and answer and try to help and that's part of what you know is missing out there is yeah it's easy to go buy a pack of seeds but what do you expect from it yeah you know and it's good to have people you know i mean that's how my relationship with d my relationship with moto rebel you know, it was all based on beta testing. They relied on me to be honest, which I brutally was. Um, both <laughs> Absolutely. <good> and, bad. <laughs> um, and, you know, and I and I always tried to be as descriptive as I could. So if somebody put themselves in my shoes, you know, all right, I'm going to grow a few of these. I could give them an easy way, show them the picture, show them the root, show them the, the plant through several stages and then show them buds and flower and then show them a finished picture. And then, you know, I think D appreciated that. It, it allowed us to become, you know, personal friends um, way back, you know, before it was posh to be friends with someone on the internet. I, I think yeah. we also knew that intrinsically him being in, you know, Canada and me being in Colorado, we were of absolutely no harm to each other. Absolutely. Um, but we became, you know, we're we're the three of us right here with three, three stooges. We're brothers. You Absolutely, know, brothers dude. From these guys mother. are my brothers. Brothers. Yeah. That's it. I don't well, have only any brothers. A brother, only a brother would fly down to Canada to his other brothers in New York City, and... up in a fucking truck, and move him to Colorado without <laughs> right. him. <laughs> without hey, him. Right? Yeah. Oh, sure. and. That's an awesome story as well. That is but, an awesome yeah. story. <laughs> when, when another time when there is enough time. But yes, Darren drove a 18-wheeler with all my life's possessions from the Bronx to Littleton, Denver. Colorado. Wow. When, when when my flight was delayed and I was supposed to accompany him. Yeah. That that is a brother right there. That's or excuse hard. me, right. When, right. when the house sale was delayed. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. But it, it was it was uh Oh, it's a great story, dude! You gotta, I gotta tell it now. The, 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 the night before, 
Oh, so, and the cop. Skitty, and Skitty yeah. lives next door to a New York City cop. Oh, He's the narcotics got a detective in his basement. <laughs> she was a so, narcotics detective, and she was not nice. So never mind um, that. She she was not nice. She did not get along with Skitty. So we got this fucking giant <laughs> U-Haul truck loaded up with all Skitty's possessions in the driveway. And it's a shared driveway with the, the cop and Skitty, right? Skitty but doesn't have I, I own it. She oh, had sorry. to ride away through it to get to her parking spot in the back. And all the time that I lived there over five years, she abused her privileges. And she parked her cop car right there in my driveway, blocking everybody from using the backyard. Are you fucking kidding me? And after a while, I got pissed, and I'd start knocking on her door and asking her to move her freaking cop car. Yeah. And this is all the while, like, she'd stand in the driveway talking on the phone underneath my second-story air conditioner, dripping sour diesel on her. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, anyways, we, we had all sorry. sort of stuff loaded on the truck the night before <laughs> we're ready to leave, right? And then the next, Skitty and I, we, we hop on the subway, we go down to Times Square, go get some dumplings or something just to chill out, do some last minute tourist stuff for me. We come back, as soon as we walk around the corner on Skitty's <laughs> block, there's fucking cop cars everywhere, right? Fucking, we're like, holy fuck, what's going on, right? We walk up to the driveway, well, here's the lady cop being a fucking Karen. Get this fucking truck out of the driveway, get this truck out of the driveway, right? And meanwhile, it's like it's dark, and on Skitty Street, there's parking on both sides of the street at night it's, in New York is, City. This is the and Bronx. We got this, in the Bronx, we got this giant, like, 26 foot truck there. The cop says, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to have to move your truck. And I'm like, Move it where? I can't yeah. even get well, out of the fucking driveway, dude. It's remember, like, they well, they we're tried to tow record. it, but we're, we're going to tow it. And I'm like, Dude, go for it. Go for it right now. I want to see you tow it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Call the tow truck right now. Let's see Remember, this, right? The truck was there. They couldn't do it because they didn't have the space to pull the truck out with attached to the tow truck. It was so, we had so, to it was so tight. People parked right up to the driveways. Oh yeah. Stuff. oh, yeah. There's no way you were getting a fucking tow truck in there to get this giant truck. So, anyways, <laughs> the cop had to tell the, the lady Karen cop. Dude, just shut the fuck up. They're leaving at 6 o'clock in the morning. Just stop being a bitch and go to bed. And Skinny and I went in the house, got high, and I fucking left the next morning and drove to Colorado and ended up at Howie's house with a giant truck in front of his house. I, I should still think about that horrible woman. <laughs> but anyway, sorry, the sidetrack. That was just a funny, funny story of moving Skitty out no, of I love New it. York to she get was, to Denver. She was kind of a top cop. She actually escorted Escobar when he was oh, no, really? no, no. Um, who's the one that they brought here? And Chapo. They, El Chapo. 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 Yeah. She escorted El Chapo at one point, if I'm not mistaken, and she yeah. made herself made herself a name with that. Now, you know what? Uninvolved Officer in, said, Karen. in said yeah. truck, you guys left out a very important part of the story. So, you know, Darren left Steve's house in New York, headed for Colorado. And, <laughs> you know, the average speed limit between here and there is like, Oh, you know, 65 to as much as 75 miles an hour. <laughs> Darren calls me from, I want to say it was like somewhere near Ames, Iowa. Hmm. Seems like he should be closer. Why? <laughs> the truck wouldn't move out of uh, low gear. Oh, no. It's got a, it's was, got a governor was, on it, right? So this yep. truck is, it, it's not doing more than 55 <clears> on <throat> a downhill <throat> slope, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going through the Poconos and it was like <laughs> fucking a crawl up the fucking 10 miles an hour. I'm like, dude, this is going to take me fucking forever. What did I sign up for? <laughs> fucking, I was I was supposed to be with him, but my house sale was delayed, so I had to stay an extra day in New York. And Darren was on a time schedule to get this done. Then he had to be back to Canada. Oh wow! So, well, like you said, that's a brother. Time. That is a that's brother. a brother, dude. Yeah, yeah. He, he, 
Darren earned huge you. points that day. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I, I, it's, it's cool. That, and then know, Howie let me stay there in his basement for a month or whenever until I rented my first house. Yep. So this is where the forums could could lead. And I'm sure we're just one of many lifelong friendships that those old forums, you know, uh, started, you know, like uh, for sure. Like I, I know these guys still talk to other people that, uh from from years ago you know like uh it was a fun time and it, it would be nice to make forums fun again um yeah. what i you know i i, I ooh, don't want to even jinx us but uh we, we've had no real trolls or anything like that i don't know if trolls <laughs> aren't a thing or if they just no they're definitely or, a thing well, oh definitely. well dude they, like uh, but i'll tell you one thing kirby's not gonna have any fucking yeah any, well, any, I, any I, patience for that but it seems very cool, dude. The reception has been very cool. Um, we almost got a thousand new members since we uh, opened up January first. So, awesome. not just barely two months, dude. Like, you know, it's not huge or anything, but, dude, I, I'm grateful. Like, that's awesome. That's new blood. People are probably gonna, you know, dip their toes in the water and feel how it is, you know, because they might have bad experiences with other forums, like you said, Matt. Right? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. I'm the king yeah, of I, the bad experiences of forums, bro. <laughs> in band from all of them. <laughs> I think I, I you know, uh, whatever. But uh. <laughs> real, real quick, can I please give a shout out to Detective Diane Spangenberg in New York Bronx? Yay! Hey, what's Yay. up, Diane? <laughs> <laughs> Diana Spangenberg. Spangenberg. Uh, Spangenberg. <laughs> Spang. But it's, I think a Spang and an N, <laughs> and and a Berg. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, along was, the way, we've made a lot of lifelong friends, you know. Absolutely, dude. That's uh, and, and it's some, not over. Some really <laughs> cool people have passed, dude. Like some really cool people, like you know. Yeah. It's just like you know, it's like twenty years is a long time, you know. Like, and we're older, you know. You guys are a lot younger, and uh, I'm sure you guys are going to do it all justice. I know Kirby's going to do everything justice, oh, yeah. dude. It's like uh, he has mad respect for us. Um, we have mad respect for him for what he's doing. Um, we love him like a brother. Um, we wish him nothing but success. Uh, yes, absolutely, hundred percent, dude. We're behind him. We support him, and we're going to be here to help him. Uh, I don't know, you know, how hands on we'll be. Like without Skitty's being a huge help to us right now like dude since uh switching over to the new send software and all that oh i bet Sk skitty skitty has been like the go-to guy we've been rocking his socks <laughs> off dude and he's just been like a trooper i'm the still it geek, geek. <laughs> we're still waiting <laughs> to get the rest of our smileys back but we'll get there one day i'm sure i've been busy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that hard <laughs> I was going to say, too, that uh, for our little collaboration here, this is also potentially just the beginning. Like, I don't know exactly what kinds of shows we'll do with the cabana and you guys in, in the future, but I can see lots of possibilities. Like, we could do little uh, highlight segments from the cabana. We could do really topical ones if you guys want. We could let you guys host your own show if you want. So I think there's well, lots of interesting opportunities to come. I think, I think three of us might like to do some comedy skits. I mean, you guys are funny together, bro. Course, like, and you guys, you guys is like, uh, uh, what do you call it? Symbiotic nature with each other, and how how the easy chemistry. you guys bust each other's balls. Like, it's perfect. Uh, you love it. Well, dude. Yep. And, and like, you know, I'm sure, like Kirby, he he's got big ideas. He wants to do events. Um, he wants yeah. to get the cabana out there, and you know, he will get some merch going and stuff like that, and you know, more podcasts, things like that. You know. For sure, uh, definitely. Uh, I want you guys to have a Discord channel too. I think that's that's going to be a, a big part of it. <laughs> we I, tried I, I, a Discord thing and we we stumbled famously. Well, I'll and help I, you guys if you need. And I have many more Bronx tales. Oh, I tell. love those. Yeah, I bet you have tons uh, there. We do have the Discord uh, thing uh, loaded up on the site, but uh, none of us really know how to use it. And no, 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 we, no um, not true. No, we do. Oh, sorry, how we know how to use it. I I use Discord oh. all the time for right. playing Pokemon Go. Oh well, there you, I, you know I I played the game as well. I, I like that game sometimes. It's very entertaining. <laughs> like we need that. to get Howie into ours then. Yeah, well. I think yeah, Howie needs to meet Denali. Don't you think? Like yeah, him think and so. Denali. Like we have a Ooh. friend that's probably about your age, 
but he's also a fish uh, a fisherman extraordinaire. He's about to go oh. fishing with uh, someone real famous in our community. And um, he's also a weed guy. And those two things, uh, I mean, you guys would get along just uh, great. That's how he did. Yeah. Uh, yep. He likes that's weed how and I, that, like he says, the tug is the drug. Yep. Tug is the drug. That, that, the that's how I drug. got along with, you know, I, I met, you know, D-Man through growing seeds. I met Skitty through trading buds. I met Buckwheat back in the day because he posted up at CW uh, way back in the day, a picture of a fly he tied for bass fishing. And I literally was like, it was really a beautiful hand tied frog with movable arms. And I was super impressed. I can't tie anything like that. And uh, God bless him. He sent me a box of them. You know, we became good friends. Him, me, and Wesos went fishing a couple of times. Um, you know, the, Half of it was for me was just meeting new people, putting myself out there, and man, the community's just been a, a great thing, you know. Oh, for sure, dude, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, we're still waiting for Wazos to come back. <laughs> hey, I haven't yes. seen him strolling. Yet. He needs he needs a little tug as the drug. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to, I need to get him on some fishing or something and try to twist his arm. I really like that tug is the drug thing. That's great. Yeah, yes. well, that's, that's how he's tagline. That's my but, tagline. Uh, yeah, this has been awesome. Like the, the cabana is going to be way different than the other forms. Yeah, similar in the whole question and answer thing, but we're not going to have any troll bullshit like that. And it's going to be like fun again. We're going to make it fun. We're going to have contests. We're going to have, you know, news. You know, it's all it's all new, like it's all up to date and everything. Yeah, there's a lot of posts to read through, and we encourage everybody to read every last one of them, dude. Like, that's, there's so much like knowledge value. there. All eighteen thousand pages. I mean, yeah, that, there's, there's such a value there. Like, uh, I was, I was, so I wrote good. down here, but I don't, I know we didn't bring it up yet. But like the free for all clone, like most people don't know about that anymore. That was a big thing with you guys, right? Sorry, what the free for all? Free-for-all. Yeah, the, the FFA. You guys remember that one? Right was that head. over your head? It was. It was a. It was a. Oh my god! Now it's over it was, my we're head. We're talking a strain. Yeah, it was a specific oh. strain that was passed out there. I think it was a mass super scout. Hey, I, I, I don't remember that one. Yeah. No, I don't remember that one either. But yeah. there were so that, many, and a lot was of during my just... era. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. But. Oh, wait, and... Well, sometimes it's hard for us to stay relevant because we want to still grow the old school strains where a lot of people <laughs> just like 1980 just called. They said they want their pounds back. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's the thing for me, dude. I, I popped so many seeds and including so many of so much of my own gear. It's just hard to remember standouts. Like there were so many standouts, but you know, you're always just moving on so many seeds and, and if you didn't pop them like as we know they're just gonna go to waste dude like yes yeah. still even that, me you know I haven't, I haven't bred a seed since 2017 and 2018 and i literally have like millions of seeds like what am i gonna fucking do with them right it's like i'd let and, and and story of my life i've given away far more seeds than i've oh, ever yeah, sold yeah. right like i think we all have right like i, well, I that's gave a part of my business I gave away like most of my collection because they were just going to go stale, just like these JoJo packs or the JoJo yeah, pack been, over there, I, which is I'm at that point too, 20, 20 years old. And it's like, yeah. well, and, and not everybody stored everything good, so I'm hoping that you know, yes. the, you know, <laughs> tissue culture or embryo resurrection, embryonic or whatever rescue, it is, yeah, right, maybe that's something you know, dude, because I am sitting on some pretty old seeds that were not stored properly that I just would love to get to, you know, some pre nine eleven stuff, but so yeah, you got to keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, I have stuff, dude, from you know that goes back to the late nineties. Ridiculous, right? Start I think the, busting some seeds, man. Some well, of the original we, stuff that we got, and I. I wouldn't even know what to do with it if I germed it, you know? I, I have I, such limited 
capacities to do that. I got to well, find send, somebody who wants them, though. That's the problem. Send me a list. We'll find some people that'll pop them. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that, for that's sure. That's probably right? the idea. Yeah. yeah, I forget. I forget who said it, but it was one of the the wisest, you know, comments I ever heard or read on a forum was that if everybody just took a single pack out of their collection and just started them, just one yeah. pack, everybody, and just see what's there, dude, we could find the new new. Oh, that's absolutely. From the fucking old time, right? Like, and, yeah. and that's all it would take, you know, a few thousand people just popping a pack from like the fucking early 2000s. Yep. Absolutely. And kill cookies. <laughs> and kill cookies. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I, I'm on that path, man. Like, I, right? I, like I'm still on the blueberry path where we're like finding old blueberry for me meant the world, you know? Right? And, and finally, we locked it down, got something that's true, truly blueberry tasting and smelling, and you could pop a pack of seeds and they're all clones of each other. You know? Oh, that's cool, dude. That it took that, a long time uh, to get there. Mathis, nice. that, that Tony guy, his blueberry was fucking. So really he good. he originally sourced his from DJ Short. So it was oh, still the go. same so, stuff, but it was it was a very early generation before it was super inbred with just a few plants. It was before that, so it right. still had a lot of open space. You could still find that super actually blueberry smelling plant blueberry, in it. You know. After a while, that was just gone. So the, it was all about chasing those down. Yeah, the one I had back in the late '80s, early '90s, um, that was a sativa-ish and just little sparse, little little popcorn nugs up and yeah. down, and the stems were blood red. Yep. Seriously, and it just you could smell one blueberry plant over a whole room of another strain. I, I got something for you, brother. I got some cool shit for you. Promise uh -huh. you. I think you're going to like it. Yeah. Okay. It's exactly uh -huh. that. It's red stemmed. It, it was super so blueberry. Oh, the taste was so yeah. wonderful. Yeah. 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 That's been my biggest chase in life. And like once I found it, I, I haven't left in like six years uh -huh. now. Same thing. I, <laughs> I, I want to do anything else. And I can't believe I let that go along with the DJ short flow. Yeah. Uh, this flow's cool. We have that too. We kept that around too. The du actually is Dutch passion flow. Uh -huh. we yeah. Well, there yeah, was my wife. It was a Dutch passion. Me, uh, they, a pack of those original blueberries. Uh -huh. I, it was a, my first ever grow, you know, where I didn't grow bag seed. And of course, I knew nothing about cloning. Yeah. So you have these beautiful blueberry plants that stink like blueberry pie and have these beautiful red stems. Yep. And of course, I could never get them again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, Dutch Passion DJ Short sold his seeds through them after Sager Matha. So yeah, the I thought, yeah, they, did. yeah. I thought they even used his stock or whatever. But later on, they used the um, stock themselves. Every this day. was this was back late late nineties. Yeah. I want I want to say that this was before I moved before I moved from New Orleans to New York. Um, Sorry, yeah, we, sorry, defi sorry, we definitely we definitely got all that. We definitely got all that in spades. So I, I I'd uh -huh. like to see what Canadian guys that that love blueberry think, and some of you guys that have had it before. I think it'd be a fun fun journey. And there's I haven't tasted anything like that since. That was just it was so. So I got a garden I can get them into there, right? That's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, I got you guys covered. Uh -huh. I got you guys covered on it for sure. Yeah. Happy to. How how you want to run any? You got I got you too, brother. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, that, experience, that experience of smelling a real blueberry plant that doesn't smell like skunk, doesn't smell like anything else, but just truly blueberry oh. jam, it blows people's minds when they smell it and see it, taste it. Yeah. it was, my story was when I was living in New Orleans, I lived in a 150-year-old house, and I had a grow in the back bedroom and back of the house overlooking the backyard. And if I was down outside in the backyard, I could smell the one or two blueberry plants over wow. everything else growing in the room. At that point, those were the first seeds I ever got, actually. This is even well before I was on the internet or anything. And a friend of a friend went to Amsterdam and brought back seeds. There, One strain was Mind Control. One was Valley Girl. Maybe it was just the two strains. But it was a, there was Valley Girl and the Mind Control, and they were both phenomenal strains. Yeah. And, of course, the loss to history, at least for me, but we still talk about the weed, me and some old friends to this day. <laughs> uh, but why did I even bring that up? Um, Blueberry. 
smelling out the window. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Dutch, the Dutch clustered. The yeah, Dutch so clustered I, there's a room a full, of room full of valley girl, and just a couple of blueberry plants would just overtake all that strain. I'd smell, and this is before I was smart enough to use carbon filters or even knew about <laughs> carbon filters. Was barely on the internet then, and so I had like a real stink going on, man. And fortunately, it was. In a part of town where no one probably either gave a shit or if anything they would not narc me out, just rob my house. That's good. So, anyway, this this is way back in my ghetto growing career, back back in the day. Uh, I was growing with four inch rockwell cubes in rows of rain gutters that I set up on a tilt with one gutter at the end to catch from all the other rains going into a reservoir. And for as horrible as the system really was, it got some really good results. This was 1988-ish. 88? Dude, I think Skinny pioneered oh, no. a lot um, of good times. Or, back or in is the that? Day. No, no, I'm sorry. That was 90. That was 93-ish. Excuse me. The 80s. I was in Minneapolis. I used to do. I got my start in Minneapolis. Um, like I might have mentioned, no internet, nothing. This was way back in the late 80s and had to go source books from, it was Schinder's Books on Hennepin. Had some obscure weed growing books and started out with that. Uh, was able to source some rock wool, professional lights we didn't even know anything about. So we went to some like building supply store and we bought a street light like a, a great, great oh, yeah. big metal halide. And we strung that up. In the <clears throat> yeah. When I, when I first saw my dad's grows, he was stealing metal halides off street lights. Uh -huh. <laughs> the yes. first grow lights yeah. I ever saw indoors were my dad's like that. Yeah. We had a metal, metal halide and we, we grew in South Minneapolis. It was my start. I knew a guy up here that used to go to uh, public works auctions and uh -huh. buy old street lights. Right from yeah. the for the old municipalities where really? they change out the street like hey yeah, just go buy the old fucking yeah the my dad would just steal them right <laughs> just steal oh. them with new bulb in it good as new yeah. there you go right you scrap the uh, whole yeah. arm part to for the scrap metal and just keep the fucking mm -hmm. light part. <laughs> I know, uh, dude. Never, never underestimate the ingenuity of a cannabis grower. That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. They can turn yes. an apple into a pipe, bro. It's fucking hey, right. Dude. I, hey, I, I turn rain gutters into a hydro system. Uh, well, yeah, you probably developed nutrient film technique yourself, bro. Exactly. I was going to say, dude, people have been copying Skitty Tech for a long time. Oh, yeah. For as long yeah, as for I sure. can remember. Like, mm -hmm. yep. Skitty Tech is, is like the bomb. Yeah. Uh, that, that's yeah. legit, there's, too. There's Fuck only right. one Thanks. thing to Skitty Tech. It, you got to follow what the dude says 100%. <laughs> right. oh, I've, then, I've that's not than, skitty tech. <laughs> I've had more than a few people ask me, you know, oh, can I change up the newts a little bit in the rock? Well, keeps, no, absolutely not. Like, go talk to skitty. He's going to tell you no. Like, explain do it why. His way. Yeah. You want the results. You got to, you got to follow the recipe. It's like oh, baked well, good, good baked goods, you know? And, and that's um, why people will wait for skinny packs, right? Because mm -hmm. they know. <laughs> yep. Um, and that's also why you'll hear me rant one day about all this crop steering crap with it, where they push the high PPMs. I oh, hope yeah. none of you guys are super crop steering fans because no. I can rip on it. And Darren, Many years ago, Darren talked me into trying a very low PPM grow with my Rockwell. Less is more. Less is more. Less is more. And, and while I did switch to EC instead of PPM anymore, I still keep it low and I, I grow it like a 1.0. I try telling EC. people the same thing. Like, like you don't necessarily need to raise the nutrients until it's telling you to do it. Until you exactly, see Exactly, dude. The Why would you even push you. it like that? Oh, they're, they're, you get the resins and... The flavors and everything. Once you start pushing that, you lose it to trade out for weight and everything yeah, else. The, exactly. And they're, they're like, oh my God, they're getting like a runoff of three point something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are, are, uh, you, are you buying it for good weed or are you buying it for biomass? Right. Oh, exactly. Biomass, right? Yeah. Right? They're, exactly. they're growing right? it for the biomass, I, I think. Yeah. They really are. are. It's like, you know, they're all using, you know, I guess 
salt nutrients nowadays, I guess got yeah. really popular, whatever, bulk, whatever. I still use pure blend, pure blend pro. Yeah, it's, it's hard to go say. bad with that, dude. That has yeah. great you know? flavor in it. Yeah. I grow in dirt. He and grows have, in dirt. This old I grow in dirt. <laughs> reality, reality of growing in dirt is like on very small scale. I grow for me, yeah. my family. And the reality is that, yeah, I can look at, at the Gary Payton. You know, I can get a clone from Steve of, of Gary Payton. I can grow it. He can grow it. His is going to yield, you know, twice, three times as much as mine in some cases, the way, you know, he grows and the way he pushes things. But we both have different needs. Sure. So I go for, you know, I go for what I'm going to consume. You know, what comforts me is part of getting my hands dirty. I used to be an archaeologist. So. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I like playing in the dirt um, a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's always been, you know, it just was a natural, easy way. And again, before the internet, you Oops. know, when I picked up a few books, it suggested that the easiest way to learn was growing in dirt. And I have, and I, I've, you've been using the same basic formula now for almost 20 years. Nothing changes. I love it. I got a man providing me a great set of clones. So it's always great. That's how it goes. So is there anything else you want to get in before we wrap this episode? I have a feeling I'm going to be doing a lot more with you guys. This is, yeah. uh, I think so. Gotta, we got to get, I think, uh, we have to, we have to do it earlier. He's going to join us. You need it um, earlier. Yeah. I'm actually nocturnal. I was supposed to be in bed about four and a half hours ago. <laughs> and I'm, pretty nocturnal I'm, I'm at the total end of my day. And, and I don't know why that my <laughs> wife has, has brought me. Oh, that's lovely. Ooh, yeah, nice. I've been what I've been taking it? bites while I've been putting my head off. You've been trying to sneak it off uh, off the camera. Yes. Dude, I made I, a I, I've just been smoking ash. <laughs> <laughs> I mostly pet my cats, and I took two bong hits. No, well, that'll work. <laughs> uh, dude, all I have to say uh, to finish off, if that's where we're going, is yeah. dude, we got to get Kirby on here because yes. the next part is like. It's it's where we're going, dude. It's an, uh, call this just, and he, we'll call this he made one. us do this. It's yeah, like, <laughs> I, I, yeah, we busted yeah. his balls to get. I I busted all your uh -huh. balls by proxy to get you. Uh -huh. It was it was uh -huh. well worth it. Well and to be it. honest, Matt, you've been yeah. busting my balls even longer than that. Oh yeah, oh yes, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm known for. <laughs> I'll say a uh, shout out to D-Man for helping me coordinate as well. Like yeah. D-Man just uh, helped no me, problem, like there. you know, send on the info. Yeah. Yeah, no problem, Ned. Right. Well, yeah, great. Thank you guys for having us on. It's, yeah, it's a absolutely. pleasure to be it's able an honor. to Yes, it's know, fun. I appreciate the, uh, Sorry. the opportunity to speak. Yeah. Yep. Same here, dude. Appreciate the opportunity. Uh, just uh, tell it how it happened, you know, as, as much as I remember. Well, <laughs> Want to sit at the table with the syndicate? Check out our Patreon in our link tree or description below. Our merch site is officially live. We have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG, and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.